Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Seltz Praley Dairy Virtual Chat. I am Brittany with the Discover Dairy Program, and we are so excited that you are joining us today as we get to meet Farmer Pam and, of course, their adorable adopted calves, Oreo, Pixie, and Zipper. First, this live chat is part of the Adopt a Cow program. More than 40,000 teachers and 1 million students every year join the fun for free. Thanks to the generous supporters of the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin Foundation. The Adopt a Cow and Discover Dairy programs are free online resources that cover common core standards in science, reading, and math while using dairy concepts to teach those lessons. Those resources can be found at discoverdairy.com, and we'll go ahead and drop that into the chat for you so you can have access to that anytime you'd like. We'd also love for you to join the adopt a cow Fund next year. So if you're interested in joining again or you're new to the program and want to join the fund, registration and re-enrollment opens on May 1st. You can go to discoverdairy.com backslash adopt to, to log in and re-enroll. Or if you're new, you can sign up right from that landing page. Again, that's discoverdairy.com backslash adopt. And we'll go ahead and put that in the chat feature for you as well. Next, as everyone continues to join us live today, you will see that chat feature is enabled. Please feel free to keep using that chat feature to comment and ask questions all throughout our talk with Farmer Pam today. But do please keep in mind, we want to make sure those questions and comments are her. related to That's our chat one. and school appropriate. We are excited to hear your questions, and I know Farmer Pam is happy to answer them. Um, before we jump to Farmer Pam, let's see who is joining us today. So let's hop over to this chat, and it looks like um, Ms. Pelner and Ms. Manikowski were one of our first ones on today. So hello and welcome. We have Mrs. Holcomb's kindergarten class from Spring Valley. So welcome and good afternoon. Um, let's see, we've got Mrs. McGrath's fourth grade class in Salem. We have our fifth grade class in uh, Wausau, Wisconsin. I might have said that wrong. I apologize. I'm a Pennsylvanian over here. Uh, we've got a first grade class in Antigo. Um, we've got lots of questions coming in from another class already from uh, Miss Brissette. So we're excited to have you all. And let's check out one or two more here. We've got some fourth graders in Green Bay, some fifth graders in Birchwood, and Mrs. Um, Flycheck's class first graders in Green Bay as well. So thank you all for joining us today. We're so excited to have you. And without further ado, I am pleased to introduce you to Farmer Pam. Hey, Farmer Pam, how are you doing today? We're doing pretty terrific here and welcome to Sells Probably Dairy. Um, we are in Clark County, Wisconsin. That's the number one dairy county. And you may not know this, but we have more cows than we have people in Clark County. That's how much we love dairy here. Um, this is a family farm. We've been on this farm for over 100 years. In fact, those of you in fourth grade who le learn about homesteaders, my great great grandparents homesteaded and cut down the trees so that we could farm on this land that we have right here. So it's really in our blood to wow. farm. I farm here with my husband and then we have three children who help with the farm. Uh, I have uh, a son, Ryan, who loves science. I have a daughter and my youngest daughter, Nicole, who's helping us out today. Um, we have almost 500 cows that we have on our farm. Plus, now do the math, we have about 400 of their babies. So wow. 500 plus 400 means we have 900 dairy animals that we have to feed every day. Now think about that going through your lunchroom, right? <laughs> and uh, so we have a nutritionist that comes twice a week to make sure that their rations are perfectly balanced. Um, if you followed along on my blog posts or Facebook page, um, you know that we don't feed our calves ju junk food. I give my kids junk food, but my baby calves, my cows, absolutely not. We feed them almost everything else, but we don't feed them junk food. So uh, how would you like to meet some calves today? Oh, we would love that. We're so excited to see them. We've loved following them all year, but oh my goodness, they look like they've grown so big, Farmer Pam. Oh, well, the first one we have here, the big girl is Oreo. And uh, we, we measured Oreo today, and she weighs 629 pounds. Oh so that means she has gained 521 pounds since she was born. 
I mean, that's yeah. a lot in, in the that past six and a half months. <laughs> and she's 14 inches taller. She me- measured 48 inches tall today. So uh, she's probably taller than some of the students that are on the call, huh? I, I would think so. Yeah. Especially if we've got any kindergartners or first or second graders. Oh. Yeah. Now, Oreo is the one who's always the naughty one. She always wants to, if I'm in a pen, she comes up and licks. If I'm trying to take pictures, some of you saw how she likes to stick her tongue out all the time. <laughs> um, her mother is called Parade. That's her mother's name. And I looked today. Look, here she comes. What an actress she is. <laughs> and uh, her mother produced 14 gallons of milk. That's 112 121 pounds of milk this morning or 14 gallons every day oreo um she's going to have a sister coming in september her mom's going to have another baby in september and she already has a brother and two sisters that are uh one of them is in the cow house and the other one is in the high school building where they get to go after they get to be uh, a year old oh my goodness so anybody who adopted oreo this is your chance to give oreo a big old wave just wave to oreo Oh, yeah. Hey, Oreo, we've got some love coming for Oreo. Uh, Mrs. Senate's class says they love Oreo's tongue. And uh, Miss Kelly oh. Kerrigan was just said, we love Oreo. We absolutely love her. So <laughs> we do. And she is. She's every. You're getting the pen. She's the first one to greet you. Um, so we have this girl back here to the right. And that is Zipper. And we what's the distinguishing fact about Zipper? The Z on her head. That's why she's got her name. She has a bit of a Z. Kind of, oh, I scared her. She has a little <laughs> bit of a Z on her head. She had a lot of extra hair because it's just starting to warm up here in Wisconsin. And she has so much hair. Farmer Scott gave her a little bit of a haircut today. So that's why she looks like she's a little buzz. <laughs> she weighs 517 pounds today. That is about 100 pounds less than Oreo. So you can see that she didn't grow quite as fast. And she's 47 inches tall. Wow. Now, her mom's name is Drama, and Drama milked 112 pounds of milk today, so that's 13 gallons. Think about 13 gallons of milk in your refrigerator. That would probably fill up your refrigerator, and that's how much milk um, Zipper's mom produces. Zipper's mom is going to have another baby around Halloween time, so maybe Aww. we na- should name that one Boo Boo or something like that. Oh, that would be cute. Oh, there's a bird. And- <laughs> Zipper has an older sister who's already had a baby, and she's over in the cow house. Oh, we've, we've so loved Zipper. her markings. I think her markings are so cool. I love that you named her Zipper because of the marking on her head. What, what a cute yeah. idea. She has a really unique marking. And then we have Pixie. I have to tell you, I think Pixie's the most popular calf we have. Oh. I have gotten more cards and letters and people who've driven to our farm to see Pixie than any of the others. Um, Pixie weighs, uh, she weighs 467 pounds. So she's gained a little bit less weight. She's 360. We want them to gain about two pounds a day. That's kind of how much weight we want them to gain so that they're big enough to become uh, cows and that they're, they're getting all the growth from their feet. Mm -hmm. And she's 45 inches tall. So she grew 12 inches. What is that? That's one foot. Oh my goodness. Her mom's name is Peru. Peru milked 119 pounds of milk this morning, and that's 14 gallons of milk. So that's one more. Think about that, 14 gallons of milk in the refrigerator. It may not all fit. Yeah, Um, that might be one gallon per student in some of our classes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and that's every day. Um, Her mom's name is Peru. She's going to have another baby um, just before Christmas. Okay, so her... She's going to have a baby just before Christmas. And um, Pixie has two sisters and one brother. Now, every once in a while, um, you see you have students or friends that are born with birth defects. Well, that's a little bit of the case with Pixie. She started off okay. And you'll see that she doesn't move as freely on her rear legs. She has a condition called spastic paresis. And it's where there's a bone pinching against a nerve in her back. And so we thought, oh, no, she looks so uncomfortable. So what do you do when you have a, a ache in your back? Well, I go to the chiropractor. Yeah, I think and I do, too. You know what? Pixie has been to a chiropractor. We oh, found no. an animal chiropractor. Um, there's actually a, about a half a dozen of them in Wisconsin. Wow. And so we took her up to Eau Claire in the city. 
and we uh, were in the parking lot outside of the chiropractor office. And so everybody who came in and out of the chiropractor office had to come and give her some love. Oh, I think it's because she's so cute. She's so white with all those she cute is. spots. She's so beautiful. So, wow. You took her to a chiropractor. That's just, that's amazing. Your farmer Pam. That really shows. Well, I would say how much you love them and care for them. That's for sure. You know, we, our veterinarian comes every Monday, every Monday morning for, uh, he does pregnancy checks and healthcare checks. Um, we, we want to take such good care of our animals. Um, that we make sure they get the same vaccinations. They get a vaccinations when they're born, just like you students did. And then when you get a little bit older, you get more vaccinations. Um, and we, we do quite a few things, but I'll tell you what, um, how about we do a little bit of a comparison? I'm gonna chase these heifers down to the, this is the pen that they're in now. This is the middle school. Huh. I talked to you before about how, uh, and those of you who have followed some of our posts, um, they start off in the daycare center and then they head to the elementary building. And then this is what we call middle school. And, and we're going to push them down there. And then Farmer Scott has a has a newborn calf. Yep, maybe that's not going to work. Farmer Scott, maybe you can wheel your calf up here. Um, so if you can look, this is the oh. cart that we use to move newborn babies around. They can't oh. walk very fast and they can't jump over things. So we have a cart that we can move the calves around to haul them around. Aww. And then we release them from the cart and she's going to, we're going to back her out. Now this is how big Zipper and Oreo and Pixie were when they were born. Aww. Now, is she not adorable? Oh my gosh, I forget how little they were when we first adopted them. <laughs> so let's get them a little bit closer. Oh. And you can see this is only what six and a half months. Mm -hmm. That's how much they grew the difference. That's a difference of about 400, 500 pounds. Wow. Oh, she's a spunky one. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, when they get closer, you can kind of see the difference in size. So I thought that one might be easier for you to see how much they've grown. Just think, you can went to school in September, mm -hmm. and now it's it's spring. How much have you grown? Has your mom had to get you new shoes, new jackets? Same thing. Oh, my goodness. She is loving this. Love this uh, big girl pen, I guess. <laughs> Wanting to get to hang out with the big kids. <laughs> That's right. She's in the big girl pen now. So um, they are, have been vaccinated. They're now in this pen. They're going to stay here until they're about, oh, 10 months old. And then we're, they're going to move into the high school. Once they get into high school, they're going to get, in a, just like when you go to school, they have more privileges. They're going to get to go outside on a lot. And they're going to have bigger pens, bigger classrooms. And they will stay there until they're two years old. And at two years old is when they have a baby and become a cow. They are a we kind of call them, for, our code words are is calf is baby, pepper is a youth or a teenager, and then cow uh, is when they have a baby. That means that they're going to be lactating, and then we move them up to the cow house where all the cows live. Uh -huh. Lots of different stages of life. It sounds like they definitely move quicker through life than we do, they though. They do. But they mature much faster. So I'm just going to review things a little bit yeah. for you. Um, what I have in front of me here, this is the baby bottle. When they're born, this is how we feed them with the baby bottle. And inside of that, we have something called milk replacer. And this is powdered milk that we mix up with water. And we feed it in the milk taxi. I have videos of us feeding them. Mm -hmm. They start on this. Then as they, just like a baby, they go from a bottle then they get a little bit of food. Their first food is granola. And this is kind of like your high protein bars. It's a lot like the granola that you eat, except it's a little bit bigger. And inside here, these little pills are all their vitamins and minerals. That's what we keep in those little pills. Then they get to graduate on when they get to be two months old, we'll start adding some hay. This is a grassier hay because it's soft for them to chew. And then when they get to be about six months old, we go to a fermented feed. And this is called, well, it's a total mixed ration because, you know, they kind of like not don't like to eat all the healthy stuff. 
So we sneak it in here. We had the minerals and vitamins snuck in here. And it's kind of like a lasagna where you put it in the oven and you cook it. We cook this a little bit in, in silos so it ferments. Uh -huh. And then we started them off when they were bedded. We started them with straw. Now, straw we use because they can nest in it and help keep warm and it keeps very dry. Now, this is wheat straw. So first we take the wheat off and then we eat that. Humans eat the wheat. We eat it in our cereal. We can eat it in our wheat pancakes. We can eat it in any types of wheat flour. After they graduate from that, they move into this barn. This is called sawdust. We have a bunch of lumber companies by us, and they make logs that they sell to companies to make furniture. And what they have left over is the shavings. So this is wood shavings. So this is trees. So we have the trees, we have the shavings, and then the finer stuff that we have in the pen here, the, the sawdust, which is very dry. And that keeps the animals nice and dry. We don't want a lot of moisture because bacteria grow in moisture. Mm -hmm. And then when they go to the cow house, they live on beach sand. They sleep in sand every oh, day. Awesome. It's just like a white beach sand. And so it's really cool in the summertime. And then after they get done milking, they get to go on vacation for two months before they have their next baby. And then they get to go to the maternity barn. And when they go there, they get to eat. And then they get to go out on a pasture and relax and be comfortable. Wow. So those are the processes we've talked about a little bit. And then we talked about how much we take care of our animals. So I thought I would show you. This is a thermometer that we use to take their temperature. Now, I also use a thermometer that like, well, what your mom and dad use when they take your temperature. This mm -hmm. one's a little bit longer and it holds the temperature. This is how we give them aspirin because we just can't put it in their mouth. We have to put it back at, behind their tongue. We can't quite tell them wanna... to swallow, can we, Farmer no. Pam? Does it work like that? <laughs> and if they have diarrhea, we give them Pepto-Bismol. And I oh. put the Pepto-Bismol in here and then we put it down their mouth a little bit. And then we can put, put it behind their teeth. And we also give them um, probiotics. Sometimes we can give them yogurt or we can crack an egg in their milk. That's a probiotic. Um, or we just use a pro, another probiotic. And if they get sick, of course, we use the same type of syringes that doctors use. I didn't bring my stethoscope. We also use a stethoscope on cows wow. so that we can listen to their stomachs. But what we do all day is uh, we start at three o'clock in the morning at the cow house milking cows. And then we spend all day um, feeding our 900 animals and making sure that they're in a clean, dry environment. We have one person all day that just hauls away their poop so they don't have to uh, lay in any poop. We have one person that just feeds animals all day. And then we have uh, two teams of people that milk cows. So we milk cows here 18 hours a day. And we end our day at 1 a.m. the next day. Oh, my so, goodness. So um, we put in a pretty full day here. I would so say that's so. just a review of some of the things that we do. So I would think the kids really must have all kinds of questions. Oh, and yeah. So I would love to make this all about you guys. So yeah. why don't you just hit me up with some of your questions and um, then we'll uh, answer those. Awesome. Yeah. So first of all, um, I would just want to let you know, there was a lot of love for the baby that was in the pen. And um, <laughs> Miss Lindborn's class said her class will gladly babysit your new calf anytime you need a babysitter. <laughs> Uh, she was really cute. She was putting on a show for us. Um, so Farmer Pam, you actually mentioned that you guys as a team are working 18 hours a day to milk the cows. But how long is the actual milking process for an individual cow? Um, well, see what happens. We have a bully in the class. Figures it's Oreo. Um, I need that babysitter now. Who <laughs> babysitting? Right. Uh, let's see. L Miss Lindborn's class. <laughs> Um, I'll see you guys pretty soon, okay? Um, milking cows here, it takes us six hours in total to milk all of our cows, but each cow individually, it takes about four minutes. So out of an entire day, these cows that are milking 14, 15, 16 gallons, they only work 12 minutes a day. Four times three is 12. So wow. they milk about 12 minutes a day to produce um, that much milk. 
Sounds like I need to become a cow. That sounds a lot, a lot better than an hour day or a farmer. You guys work a lot of hours too. So the, the best part is, you know, every Monday the doctor comes to check on them if they need some help. Every uh, other Friday we have a, a hoof trimmer that comes to give them manicures. Wow. Um, each cow gets their their toes manicured twice a year. Um, they get wow. they get them looked at, and then if they have any problems, because you know they walk around in a lot of moisture, we have uh, we have them look at look look at them as well mm -hmm. and the nutritionist comes twice a week i mean and filiberto he gives them fresh bedding and makes their beds every day and uh, alfred feeds them so i would like somebody to take care of me that well yeah they are living like the prima donna lifestyle here constantly I know. getting the most excellent care from your team that's amazing um, we had an interesting question. They were curious. Are this is from uh, Miss Ragnar? They're wondering: Are cows hungry all day, or are they trained to eat at certain meal times, kind of like humans are? Or how does that work for cows? You know, telling them when they're hungry mm -hmm. or how you feed them. Actually, they have a um, they have a buffet all day long, a smorgasbord buffet that they can go to. So whenever they want to eat, they just walk up to the headlocks and they go and they eat. And we, we clean their plates once a day in the morning and then we deliver fresh food and then whatever they don't eat, we take away. Now, the baby calves, we like to control what they eat. And so when they're newborns, uh, we feed them twice a day. They have access to their calf granola and they have access to water all day long. And when they get a little bit older, they have access also to uh, to their um, hay all day long. We just control the amount of liquid nutrients they get and spread that out. Gotcha. Now, when they get milk, it's a high protein drink. So if you when you go to the store and buy your gallon of milk, um, they're drinking something more like a Fair Life or a or high energy drink, hmm. and that helps them grow healthy and strong. Because we know that when calves grow healthy and strong, they don't get sick. As long as we do our job right and, and make sure they are in a dry, not windy place um, and they eat a lot, they really grow and they don't get sick when they grow well. And you know why we like that? Because we love animals. Mm -hmm. And the last thing we want to do is have them not feel good because we love every one of them. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, just like when, when someone gets sick at home, you know how much more time it takes for your mom and dad to take care of you? It's a lot more work. I have 900 animals here. And if I have a lot of sick animals, we figure a sick animal takes an extra half an hour just for that one per one animal. I have a cat that's stuck in my hinder right here. Hey. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. She's being curious. <laughs> no, that, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, we've had a couple of folks asking, and I'm, I'm curious that they even know that this is a thing. So bravo to all of you that are even asking this question. They were curious if your cows had ma have magnets in their bodies to help keep them safe or have you use that um, way of protecting your cows at all for hardware disease or anything. Somebody has been doing a little studying. Yeah, a number of you. classes said it, I know. Well, I'll tell you what, on our farm, we do not. Because what we have is we have magnets. So when they deliver their feed in that great big mix master that that we might be able to see as he drives by today, or I have them on my videos, you may see him. There is a big magnet there. And so any type of metal that may come from the field or anything we don't want cows to eat, that gets captured there. Also, when they're out in the field and they're harvesting, they have a magnet on the harvesting equipment to catch anything. So we try yeah. to be more pre do more preventive work. Now, mm -hmm. That doesn't stop peppers from chewing on stuff they shouldn't be chewing on or right. things happen just like 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 you guys, just like mm -hmm. kids. Um, some people do. Now, there is some new technology. Now, all of our cows wear Fitbits. And so the mm -hmm. Fitbits monitor their walking. It monitors their temperature and it monitors their rumination. And I talk a lot about rumination on our Facebook posts and blog posts mm -hmm. about how that happens. So if you want to learn more, go there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there is some new technology where they're talking about putting a bolus uh, that they can consume and it will take their, do the same thing as a Fitbit hmm. now yeah it'll do the same thing as a Fitbit but it's something they consume it costs a little bit less than a Fitbit a Fitbit for a cow costs the same as a Fitbit for a human it's going to run you about $150 interesting uh, depending on how, all the other things you, you have with it sure yeah good absolutely. question 
It was way, a good to, way to try to way to try to trip up Farmer Pam. <laughs> I know these are smart kids here. We've got a couple of people just curious about who your oldest cow is on the farm, and if you happen to know her name. Well, one of my favorite old cows. Her name was Pepper, and she was a lovely cow. Uh, we've had cows that uh, can be seventeen, eighteen is the oldest cow that we've had on the farm. Now that's very extreme. Wow. That's like somebody who is 100 years old. Uh, what you kind of think about is, is if a, when a, a cow has a baby when she's two, kind of like a human who's 20. And so cows, humans start getting kind of old, you know, 60, 70, mm -hmm. 80 years old. That would be six, seven or eight years old in a cow. Hmm. So it's so just think about how many people, you know, are 80 years old. That's yeah. about how, what the same percentage of cows that we have that are eight years old so wow. that's kind of how you can relate to that as as far as a time span so we do have some cows that get very very old but for the most part the average cow is five six years old wow okay well that makes sense that that's was actually, how long you answered, she lived. yeah you answered another question we had some folks wondering like what was the average lifespan on your farm and, and everything else so look at you answering two for one right there um, we've got some questions about bull calves on your farm. Where mm -hmm. are they or what's that transition look like for your farm if a bull calf is born on your farm? Mm -hmm. um, we do raise a few bull calves that we sell for breeding to other farmers. But most of our bull calves go to a, someone who specializes in growing bull calves. Because in school, you know, boys and girls don't always get along. Well, mm -hmm. that really happens here on farms and the bulls get a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. And so as they get to be a little bit older and that probably it will be about that middle school age, we separate them. Um, but most of our bulls go to someone who specializes in growing bulls and keeps them um, together. And that's what they that's what everybody has to do what they're good at. Right. And we're good at at heifers. We're good at cows. And then they, they go someplace else for the people who specialize in, in raising bulls. Raising bulls. Well, that makes sense. I'm sure they have a different diet and, and different needs. So that makes sense. Very cool. Yes. Yes. And they don't, you know, boys don't get along as well as girls. So they fight a little bit more. So we have to, <laughs> it takes people... different types, a little bit different housing. Right. Oh, that's true. That's true. Absolutely. Let's see. Uh, we're going to take one or two more questions here yet. Um, let's see. They were wondering, this is specifically from Alana and Mrs. Jorgensen's third grade class. They're wondering who takes care of the animals when you're gone, Farmer Pan. Well, that's a great question because it's a very um, dedicated team that we have on our farm. Just like you have some people in your school that are janitors and some people who are specialists in, in being the cooks and some are specialists at FIED and music, right, and math, we have people who specialize in things in our farm. And we actually were a smaller farm, Farmer Scott and Farmer Pam. We did all of the work and we could never leave the farm. And even now, we work on every holiday. I mean, we don't get to open Christmas presents. My kids grew up, they could not open Christmas presents until all 900 animals were fed and taken care of. Wow. Animals always come first for dairy farmers. Um, and so what we had to do in order to, to be able to afford to hire people to work with us, we had to grow our farm bigger because you have to be able to pay them. So we had to sell more milk so that we could um, hire more people. So we have people on our farm who specialize in feeding, cleaning, milking and um, maternity and animal care birthing calves and then we cross train so that a farmer Pam, Scott and I are not home or we take a day off everybody is trained um, so that we can cross train and that way all of us get one or two days off uh, most of us only get one day a, a typical farmer farm person works 12 hours a day that's wow. that's the standard yeah it's it's 12 hours a day um, that's that's just the standard and we don't get overtime um, pay. That's just the way it is. And, right. um, You've we get about one day a week of, off. Yeah. yeah. Each of us gets about one day a week off. We don't have every weekend, some of them every other weekend. Um, but one day off 12 hours a day is pretty wow. much the standard for all farmers. Yeah, no, that that's awesome. Um, farmer Pam, we have many, many, many people curious if there was a name for the baby calf that came in into the pen. Do you have a name for her yet? 
you know, she's not old enough. We haven't named her yet, but I certainly can take suggestions. I think oh after you get done, um, yeah. you can ask your questions and I think you can log on if I remember right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. onto their uh, Zoom and they can ask questions. And I've gone back and answered all the questions when I've done this before. Awesome. So if you have more questions or suggestions for a name, I'll tell you what, I'll take all of the suggestions in the most popular name I will put on our Facebook page and our uh, our uh, web page where I have a blog for just adopt calves and then you can mm-hmm. find out what the winning name was. How about that? Oh, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Yes, absolutely. Once we're done with this live chat, which we're going to be wrapping up here soon, this will be available for you to watch anytime you want. So you're more than welcome. As Farmer Pam said, you can comment on the video or you can go right to her mm-hmm. Facebook and, and connect with her there and, and then she'll go ahead and, and hopefully pick a name for our cutie that got to join us today, which was exciting. Um, oh, one said Zoom. That's cute since she was Zooming around everywhere. Um, Farmer Pam, we have absolutely loved getting to see our ladies today and learn so much. Thank you for being so incredibly knowledgeable um, and a fantastic farmer and sharing with us um, your, your ladies. It's been a lot of fun following them all year long, and I still cannot believe how big they have gotten all year long. It's pretty it's pretty impressive how big they've gotten in just what seven months or so of of being alive so it's it's great um we did actually have some folks ask this question and i wanted to wrap up with this question they were wondering what is your why why do you choose to be a farmer every day you talked about how you know how much hard work it is um but we'd love to know what's your why for being a dairy farmer well there's always a lot of whys um This has been in my family for over 100 years. I grew up working with animals. I grew up learning to love animals. And I wanted to raise my children in that same environment. Um, And I'll tell you what, we just flat out love cows. We just flat out love the science of, it's a lot of science. We love birthing calves. Every new calf born, and we have calves born every day. That's a new start. It's a new beginning. Um, and we love uh, caring for animals and making sure they're healthy. That's probably our number one thing. And then we're really proud that by doing a good job raising healthy animals, they produce way more milk than what their offspring can consume. And we get to share that with boys and girls and moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas in some wonderful dairy products of milk and cheese and uh, yogurt and uh, may, many different types of drinks. I know coffee is really popular when I have a lot of the uh, youth tours that come. Mm-hmm. They, uh, they love coffee, and we love you when you put milk in that coffee. And another thing that's getting to be really trendy that we, we really need to talk about is, and if you follow my posts, uh, we talk about recycling. Animals have been sustainable in recycling and repurposing. Um, just like I told you about the sawdust, that's tree waste. We feed our cows, um, uh, if you drink beer, there's brewer's grain. Instead of going to a landfill, we feed it to cows. And uh, if you eat an orange um, or make orange juice, what's left over is the orange rind. We can take that rind, but sugary, and we feed it to cows. We can take uh, ethanol for gas. When you make ethanol, they use corn. And what's left over is a distiller's grain. And so instead of it going into a landfill, we have learned how to feed that to cows. Wow. Um, the same goes for many, many products, including, look at your clothes you have on right now, cotton. Mm-hmm. The cotton for clothes, they take that puffy part off. And when they get done with that, what's left is the seed that's full of oil and fat and energy and protein. Where do you think that goes? I'm going to guess the cows. We feed it <laughs> to cows. So not only... Um, do they do a marvelous job of giving us some tasty things to, to eat? They also are really the natural recycler that they take things that humans can't eat, like alfalfa or grasses, and they take waste from industry, and we turn that into a recycled product. Wow. It's just egg-mazing. It's it egg-mazing. Um, it so we, are, we find that, that we love animals. We love working with them, but we find them they're just marvelously interesting. And we think they're a very important part of sustainability and having a healthy environment that we all can live in. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Uh, I, we, uh, we love that you are so passionate to take care of these cows, to be awesome recyclers and work with the recyclers and, and just be a great steward of our land, of our animals, um, and just making our world a better place. So thank you so much, Farmer Pam. I see you holding something up. So go ahead. I'll let you yes. share that. Um, we have a lot of information. I know some of you have followed on our uh, blog, our webpage blog for adopt a cow and on our Facebook page. And we have examples of um, how to milk a cow. We talk about recycling. We talk about uh, food. We talk about taking cow pictures on picture day. Um, we talk about lots of different things that we do on the farm. And we, I've got videos on there. And actually, we even talk about, I think I've got information about when they get their toes trimmed. So there's wow. a lot of information there. So even after today, we still are going to add more information. Uh, we have a lot of schools that are coming to the farm uh, in the next month. And we'll have some videos and pictures of them as well. So if you want to still have questions or send things to the calves, I answer every single letter I get from schools. And oh. I, I think even on the video, I have a video of answering questions from a class in uh -huh. Whitehall. I answered I all the questions. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't be afraid to contact us. You met Farmer Pam and you met our three calves, but now we're friends for life. We are. So uh, we'll, we're friends for life. And now you know a farmer. Now yeah. you can tell people that you have met a farmer and yeah. you've adopted a calf. Oh. That makes you special. It does make you all special. We have loved having you in this program and Farmer Pam, they have loved learning from you. If you, I know afterwards, you're going to check out the chat. There is a lot yep. of love pouring in from you, for you, of everyone saying thank you so much. They have loved following any, all three of these cows. Um, they've just loved learning from you and they've loved the transparency from you and just that ability to learn. Um, and you know, what, what you're providing us is just an, a, an amazing resource, right? We are now becoming knowledgeable about the dairy products we're consuming, knowing it's healthy for, for our bodies. And it's healthy because you are have you are a great caretaker for our cows um, and helping to produce a healthy product. So thank you so much for being an amazing dairy farmer. Um, and definitely go follow Farmer Pam on social media and, and continue following along with the story of these amazing cows. Uh, farmer Pam, any last minute words before we jump off today? Well, I think it's spring. So I think there's no better way to celebrate than having some ice cream. So treat yourself with some ice cream. And I thank you uh, from Farmer Pam and Farmer Scott. We just appreciate that you uh, love our dairy products, love our animals. And uh, be sure to put some uh, chocolate or something on it. I like chocolate and nuts on my ice cream. So Ooh, give her I'm a try. A right? I'm a sprinkles girl. So I agree. Are you Go ahead. I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Farmer Pam. Absolutely. Go get yourself some ice cream. Enjoy um, the spring weather here. And we've loved having you part of the program. Don't forget to sign up again for next year and uh, follow along with some new calves. So we look forward to seeing you.